Hello, welcome to Farm Talk Friday. I'm Ken Jordan. This is my beautiful wife, Giovanna. Hi, honey. Hi, baby. You look so beautiful today. Oh, thanks. What a nice hat. Thank you. Nice shirt. <laughs> All right, yeah. this is uh, December 6th. No, this is January 6th, 2023. This. Is this the first time we've said 2023? Yes, yes. it is, obviously. It is. Okay. <laughs> And our wardrobe today compliments of Eva Kim, Eva Kim and DJ Eva Kim. Plur AF. Yeah, which, which means we don't want to say yeah. the, what it means. Well, it means, well, it means plur Asian females. That's right? right. But it also means other things. Plur as yeah. Yeah. I keep wanting to. We're on the mirror mode, so you guys can see our hats and shirts. But yeah. I can never. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There it is. No, the that's AF. Good. That's good. There it is. There's mine. Let me do this good mm -hmm. somewhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. Shiny. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Whoever's on mine. All right. So, uh, all right. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what I've done this week. Yep. Weekly recap. Yeah. From my husband, Repa Ken Jordan. Repaired a lot more drip lines. I want to talk about the term drip line. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying drip line because it's got two meanings in the farming permaculture world. So I'm gonna start saying drip irrigation, okay? Hmm. So I've been repairing the drip irrigation because drip line is the um, outside edge of where the leaves drip water if they're being rained on. And typically what you wanna do is water the drip line that's where the roots are instead of around the trunk so that's the better use of the term drip line mm -hmm. and now i'm going to be referring to our irrigation as drip irrigation how about that great <laughs> okay um yes and uh we're still uh we still are without our employees we've been doing a lot of watering taking care of the chickens every yes. day um, We've been very responsible parents. Uh, we haven't been going out on social. Yeah. Now, this is going to be impossible. I'm going to try to point to the chicken tractor. Okay. Uh, today, we moved the chicken tractor right there. Look, all I had to do is Because move my head. they had sufficiently eaten all the grass, and uh, there was a lot of ants there. So we moved yeah. them to some new grass. And yeah, the ants were, like, overrunning their, their yeah. core. Do I get to... Uh, and PP number five right now or later? I was thinking you would do it later. Okay. Okay. Is that it? That's all your updates That's right now? That's all I got, man. Oh, because the rest of it is... Happy birthday, here. Carly. Happy birthday to Carly. <laughs> yes, we're going to see her later tonight for her birthday. A shout out to Michael Goldberg. His birthday is tomorrow. Tomorrow, it's yes. Tomorrow. Um, we haven't seen Michael in a long time, but we do miss him and Ramona and his... Big family. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so weekly recaps. I kind of want to do a Green Wave slash Rancho Delicioso update at the end of this after you do your permaculture um, permaculture principle number five. Uh, but I do, I want to give a shout out to Alicia. She um, She's one of our amazing friends and she's an incredible photographer. And she has been taking these pictures of the scarlet macaws that fly past her home. Mm -hmm. And so she um, loves them and mm -hmm. is super grateful that Wild Sun, one of the projects that our nonprofit Green Wave helps out, um, that Wild Sun and Jeremy, it was his idea, you know, to adopt the program of reintroducing the scarlet macaws into this area. And so, uh, you know, it's just nice to see people being grateful for the work that we've helped work towards in the area. Right. So um, this week we had a, a squirrel, I think the same squirrel that has eaten hibiscus before. Uh, I've caught this squirrel and it's a boy. He fully mooned me and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, now I can call <laughs> you a boy. Um, oh, sorry. I don't know if I can say that now, but... Um, <laughs> Anyway, I don't know how the squirrel identifies, but he has some genitalia. That they, makes, they had some genitalia. They had some genitalia. That makes me think 
he's that. Moving on. Anyway, um, so the squirrel, I don't, I just don't get like what, like what determines, like he's surrounded by food. He eats not only our anonas, which we didn't get any of, by the way, um, and that might be a different squirrel, but it's like they're surrounded by food. And on the hibiscus plant, they're eating the leaf and they're eating the little, the flowers when they bloom and the buds. We have a lot of hibiscus, like a wall of hibiscus. So at what point, and I have the same question for the monkeys who like, you know, they're surrounded by food and then they decide to eat and it's like, why? Why that one? Why right now? I don't know, it's just very interesting to me. So he got caught and then I have a cute video of him that I posted on the Green Wave house page and he's just munching on this flower bud. And so anyway, um, saying hi to some of the people that have just logged on that at least we can see. We see Tom, uh, Hope, Julian, hello. Julian's in Miami, apparently, um, yay. Okay, so other things that have happened. Um, we had this beautiful, what Ken and I call misteam. It's, it's kind of like fog, but it's less foggy. It's mysterious, steamy, <laughs> low-lying cloud stuff. And, um, and it can be really beautiful. So I woke up and we've been sleeping in this, uh, in our studio that we're in right now. Um, and so we can like see outside from these windows, like from the bed. And I noticed that there was like some writing on the, on the windows and it could, maybe it wasn't writing or maybe it was from the glass guys, like writing something a long time ago and they were never properly cleaned. And I'm like, what is this weird code um, up there? But anyway, so I ended up going outside that morning to, you know, do some farm chores. And um, it was so beautiful. It's like, it was obscuring like the sunbeams just so that you could see sunbeams like coming right at me, like Avatar 3D style. And um, and it almost like I could see rainbows in the Mysteem sunbeams, kind of like, you know, these glasses, I have some right here, thanks to Simon on New Year's who gave me these. And they have the... Um, Let's just see if they work. No, I don't think they're gonna oh, work man. for the people. Well, what did what light source do they have that it would I have work no for them? Idea. Anyway, so these are diffraction glasses, and I put them on. And I um, actually, it's interesting. We have this big ring light. I was hoping it'd be like one giant heart. But usually, if I look at a light, um, then I, I get a heart. Diffraction glasses can make different shapes. But anyway, I was seeing rainbows in the sunbeams. Thanks to the misteam, it was really pretty. So, so tell them what these glasses do, though. I don't think we. Well, I just said it. it. Yeah, normally you see hearts on every light source, and the best way to use these is with fireworks. Fireworks are the most amazing heart display ever. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so plastic socks and um, the Keep a Breast <laughs> Foundation has an amazing, you know, uh, part of their website, or I think they might even have like a separate website for the plastic socks campaign but you know it is ubiquitous and you know we do get gifted plastic and sometimes it's just about and, using it well uh, yes, and using it till it's life plastic is, is extremely valuable on this planet but what you want to do is not accumulate a bunch of junk plastic and you want to dispose of it properly or recycle it if you can, but some of it, like, I don't think the glasses at this point in time can be recycled. All right, then it goes in the landfill. Unfortunately. Yeah. Or we can be creative and find other uses for it. So yeah, yeah. go uh, kids, uh, figure it out. Yeah. All okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, Ken, you already talked about the drip lines. Um, do you want to tell everyone about my moon raking idea? Well... <laughs> We're Bond fans, by the way. Okay, so we were in Pacifica over Christmas, Pacifica, California, and there was a hotel restaurant, restaurant. Um, called Moonraker. And, you know, we know the James Bond film called Moonraker, but I just thought to myself, well, there must be a, a meaning to Moonraker that existed before the Bond film. So I, I looked it up and... 
like one of them was like a Scottish dumb person or something like that. But, <laughs> but what clearly what Moonraker means when it's close to water is it's a sail on a, on a boat, on a ship, a sail on top of the top sail. And it made, so it's a really high sail and it's raking the moon. It's a moonraker. It's a sail on a boat. That's it. So, well, I think everyone did deserve that. Um, but what I meant was, do you want to tell them about the idea that I had regarding No, you have to explain raking? it. This oh, is the I best, have to explain it. This is the it. best idea ever. Okay. So, um, I don't know. I might have a tan, but I'm also still pretty fair skinned. And so I have to plan my working hours usually like kind of early or in the later afternoon. And I just have to be really careful with the sun. And so I was thinking, you know, years ago, I was like, I want to do more stuff at night. And then I had a friend say, you know, plants don't like to be cut at night. And I'm, I love pruning. And so I was like, well, that sucks. That's, that's everything I do pretty much, which it's not. But, um, so it just came to me and it was probably because we were just exposed to the restaurant and I w had to rake a bunch of leaves because our guy's not here. And, uh, and so I have all these piles and I was thinking, hey, that's something that doesn't really affect the plants at night that would be super beautiful on a full moon. It's so bright here. It's full moon tonight. Like we could go outside and rake leaves and also then take that and then put it where it needs to go, you know, around the trees, making mulch piles or saving the soil. So that's my moon raking idea. So, I told yes. Ken I want to be outside doing more stuff. This is the, new, the new and third definition of moon raker. I went to, I went to like middle school and high school. No, well, definitely elementary school with Byron. Byron um, was awesome dancer and football player. Great to see you on. Hi, Robin and um, Mary and Maureen. Hey, Robin. Much love to all of you. Okay. Okay, so yeah, moon raking. Moon raker. <laughs> moon raking. New definition of moon raker. All right, so. Uh, so Ken has permaculture principle number five today. Yeah, That's we're doing this for. Seven more five, seven, weeks. Seven, six more weeks. Okay. Uh, permaculture principle number five is use and value, use and value renewable resources and services. Now, um, it doesn't say natural resources, it just says renewable resources and services. And a lot of these are obvious things, you know, like uh, the sun, we, we have solar panels, and so we are valuing and using that renewable resource. Um, also, rain, water. Um, you know, one day I'd, I would love to put some small generators in the Quebrada, that's like our ravine or whatever for the rainy season and try to generate power from the rushing water, you know, one day. But um, we use rain to irrigate everything we have during the rainy season. Um, and uh, wind also, we don't have any, um, we don't have a, a windmill. No, That'd but I've looked, nice. I've looked into that before and sent it to you. But On you Amazon, you can find kind of inexpensive systems. Yeah, but you still need to um, value and use uh, the wind. I can't think of how we're doing it right now. We do know the prevailing wind direction, and we always think about that when planting or um, planting shade and things like that. But here's some, uh, some other things that are using and valuing... Um, renewable resources. Our chickens who give us eggs all the time, that is a renewable <laughs> And we do resource. value them greatly. And they also do pest control and they also um, add to our soil. Yes. So it's a super resource. Um, our, um, our SUV uh, runs on vegetable oil. That's a combination of a renewable resource and a renewable service. We, we depend on the service of uh, local restaurants. And, uh, and so that is a renewable resource and service, the vegetable oil that goes into our car. And our cat, Scratch. Yeah. 
pest control. He's he's he's, he's, he's sort of <laughs> keeping after the mice, you know. He tries. Yeah, he likes hanging out in the gutter. Well, we kind of uh, <laughs> handicap him by putting a little bell on his thing <laughs> so he doesn't kill too many things. But uh, he's great at that. So um, you can apply it to many things. So perma mm -hmm. all permaculture ideas apply to life and not just farming. So um, yes, you know you can value your friends, family, employees, and they will, you know, always provide services to you, always. friendship, <laughs> or they, they can, they can, they can. They can be great workers, or they can provide great friendship, or whatever. They're valuable. Yes, they're valuable. Friends are valuable. So that's it. Permaculture principle number five, use and value renewable resources and services. So... When we, for wind, I don't know if this applies or not, but um, so we've, how did we do it? No, we used the car. We had like a hurricane come through and it, um, it blew over some trees and it took out some land and now we know to use the car, which is renewable because we have it all the time. <laughs> Um, well, and we block the wind now in that section and then we've grown more trees to um, help with the erosion, and then we also put in vertebrate. That doesn't really apply. That must be some other principle, but. We'll figure it out. We're gonna figure that out. Anyway, um, let's see what Mary is saying. She says, I wish we could use vegetable oil in our cars. It would save a lot going to the landfill. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky it's thing tricky. with using uh, vegetable oil. You have to have a. Hi, Sarah. It's best with a traditional diesel engine, not a turbo diesel. Uh, traditional diesel engines will run on pretty much any kind of vegetable oil uh, and then you have to filter it really good and then you also have to make sure a few other things like you don't want to just sit in your car for a long time without your car not running um, you uh, don't want to oh you need to heat it up a little so it works better in this really hot climate that we're in but in colder climates it's uh, you have to have like something that heats it up in your engine. And you can't like go away on vacation for a week or two and come back to the car. Like it, you need to yeah. empty it, right? Yeah. And it's and it's not something that can like save the planet because it's pretty much like you can have one vehicle per neighborhood because there's not, yeah. it's not an endless supply of used vegetable oil. Right, and it still has emissions. That's the other thing. There's almost zero smog. There's almost zero particulate emissions, but it does still generate the same amount of CO2 as uh, a regular gas or diesel vehicle. Yeah. Uh, Marine's saying, use wind for cooling system, pipes down into the earth to cool and back up into the house. Cross ventilation. Yes, of course, ventilation for your house <laughs> or shade structures or whatever. You want to make the openings in the facing the direction that the wind comes in. Thank you, Mo. Thanks, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so that was permaculture pinna, or I keep saying that, uh, permaculture principle number five. And then we have some Rancho and Green Wave news. Okay. Um, so this doesn't impact our nonprofit specifically, uh, but because we consider our concern ourselves with kind of like all environmental matters, I do want to, just in case people don't know that live in our area, the turtle sanctuary up in Manzanillo got torched. Um, I think the cops have decided that it was arson, so it was probably poachers, and um, it's sad. So if anyone locally wants um, some images of that, I can um, forward what I was forwarded uh, from a friend, Tara Shaw, thank you for sending me that. And um, I haven't contacted the organization yet. I'm not sure if they're looking for donations. Um, it's Serena's, they got the Turtle Sanctuary got torched. Serena's. Serena's. Uh, and then Rancho News, we, um, are going to have our next market uh, January 29th. So if you're in the local area, then get ready for that. We might have some, it's summer now, so we don't have to worry about the rain and we're going to hopefully encourage people to come and dance, have some float toys. We have a great area there at the space, um, which is called Wonderland. They have an amazing 
uh, playground for kids. So it's a family-friendly event, and, um, and we look forward to seeing you all there soon. Uh, we want to welcome back Katie Bunny. She has uh, returned after many months, and she's going to be coming back with her guy Noah, who we're really excited to see. And um, Katie Bunny is going to start a Patreon campaign for her Eco Dragon Castle. I'm sure she will be a guest on one of the future Farm Talk Fridays, and she'll tell you all about it. Um, and I'm really excited because apparently no one knows how to build and he's built like a mansion out of like reclaimed materials. So I think he's going to be the perfect person to help her with this project. Uh, and then congratulations to Pippa. She has been part of our extended community for a while, but she just started her build. And, um, and she's actually, she's doing, she is the founder of a newer nonprofit called Futuro Nativo, and she's doing a Brie Brie immersion coming up soon. So you can find her on like Instagram and follow her. And um, if you're into uh, kind of indigenous um, empowerment and, you know, um, immersions, then uh, definitely check out what she's doing. Hi, Anne. And, um, Anne just jumped on and I want to say, Anne, I've been following you and your chickens and your homesteading and it's been really exciting and I'm so glad that you're loving the chicken life. It's super fun. Uh, and then, yeah, the last thing I want to say is I just want to give a shout out to Jeff McCabe. He is the visionary behind Rancho Delicioso, this developing eco village that we are part of down here in Costa Rica. And, um, you know, he's put in a lot of work over the years. And, um, and so he's been doing other things. He is part, um, well, he's, he started a, uh, crypto company called, um, Divi. Yeah, Div Divi. And then they have like a comic division called lightning works. And so he's been, you know, doing other things, um, as well, but he, like our, our website um, for Rancho Delicio, so pretty much like all the content on there he created. And um, and it's not just so much that he like slapped up images, but that he did all this research and was putting up like really thorough um, blog posts. And he did that for years. And in addition to, you know, having this, you know, grand plan and talking us all into um, this experiment that we are in at Rancho Delicio. So thank you, Jeff. And I think that's all we have. That's it. It's probably a long one. So thanks everyone for tuning in and we send you love. Happy oh, weekend. We will see you next week on Farm Talks Friday.